Hey, what's up, interwebs? I'm that toy guy. And if you hear that beeping in the background, that's the garbage truck going in reverse. Uh, but today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 Autobot Springer. And I'm very, very late to this figure. But there's a story behind it because I really liked um, Last Stand of the Wreckers, Sins of the Wreckers, and uh, More Than Meets the Eye, and The Lost Light. Those are my favorite Transformers comics. And when I found out that they're making a Springer of the Last Stand of the Wreckers design, I really wanted to get it. But I wasn't willing to pay $30 because back at that point, I was just starting out with uh, a new job and whatnot. And so I didn't really want to get that. So I passed on it. And then I saw it for clearance for 10 bucks at Walmart. And again, I passed on it because I didn't have any money with me. And then when I went back, it was gone. So I, loved, I missed out on this guy. <clears throat> but there is a store in Vaughn Mills that sells this guy. It's called uh, Toys, Toys, Toys. I've bought a bunch of stuff from it from them before. If you ever want like old Age of Extinction or Combiner Wars toys or even old movie, to old like Dark of the Moon or Revenge of the Fallen toys, go there. They have them. But they had this guy for 65 bucks with a giant hole punched into the front of the box and they would not take any of the money off for the, the hole in the box. So I never bought it. Then I found this guy for $20 at TFCon with one of these. So I jumped on the chance and I picked it up and I applied the uh, repro labels to it. Not all of them. Uh, as you can see, I left the license plate and a couple of Autobot logos and the spares. But yeah, I have applied these stickers to Springer and he looks amazing. So let's take a first quick look at the box here. You got the Thrilling 30 Autobot Springer, Triple Changer Robot to Helicopter, and Armored Car stuff. I would say this is probably a level 3 transformation. But yeah, you got a very nice picture there of Springer holding his gun with the bayonet, which I think is pretty cool. On this side, not really anything. Autobot symbol. On this side, he's Series 2, number 1. He's an Autobot. Autobot Springer, Thrilling 30. I miss these Generations boxes. They were so much fun. Generations at the top there. On the back, you have a bio... And your stats, and your helicopter, your vehicle, and your robot mode. And then the whole IDW publishings. And then on the bottom, the figure everyone loves. So here is Springer. And I know everyone hates it, by the way. Um, and inside the box, I wasn't expecting to find this. But I also found this little booklet here I'm trying to get open. That comes with a little mini poster for... Stomp and Chomp Grimlock, which I actually, I saw a person buy Stomp and Chomp Grimlock at TFCon, and they were walking by myself and my friend, we were sitting down at the bottom of the stairs eating our lunch, and um, the kid walked by with his dad, and the Grimlock would not stop going off, and the dad was trying to turn it off, and the kid was trying to turn it off, and they were having a fight, it was funny. Um, on the other side, you basically have advertisements for all the, um, you got the uh, one-step changers, the flip changers, the power battlers, and the deluxe class figures. And this is closer to around, I think, Wave 3, I think was when Lockdown and they, them came out. And then you got the all the other random garbage. And then Shout Factory's uh, remasterings of the uh, original series and Beast Hunters movies. So yeah, that's a neat little thing that you get in there. But here is, falling over, here is Springer. And just quickly taking a look at the one accessory that's not on him right now is his, his gun. Which is very nicely done, very nicely painted. Got some nice sculpt work going on there. You got two missiles. Underneath looks very nice. Now it is friction fire, but it's done very well. It makes friction fire cool and it's awesome. You push this forward and it fires both bullets. But it fires them both at very, very nice speeds. And if you don't want to fire both of them, one, two. Love that. It's very, very cool. Very, very nicely done gun. The other one is a sword, which is his propeller, spoiler alert, which spins quite well. So, here's a look at his helicopter mode, and this is probably the worst of the three modes. Not that it's bad, it's just not the best one of the three. So, taking a quick look here, I have a gripe with this panel. I wish it was on a double hinge so that it could tab into here better, because if it was on a hinge and a hinge, you could orient it properly where it goes in. It's on a single hinge, so it never goes into these tabs at all. It's kind of annoying. But other than that, really, the helicopter mode is fine. I mean, it looks like Springer's helicopter mode. And you got the nice windows at the front here. You got the repro labels. Obviously, I put the record symbol on a little crooked because I was getting tired at that point. But yeah, you got these little stickers here. They're made of a nice adhesive vinyl, so they will not rip unless you're really rough with them. 
So yeah, you got the uh, warning stickers down the back here. You got some more of that nice detail. There's a lot of nice paint on this guy too. Like this is paint. This is um, that's not paint. This is paint though. These yellow here is paint. This is paint. What else is paint? Um, this is paint. Underneath you can kind of see the robot. These are paint. So yeah, it's a lot of nice uh, looking paint on this guy. For a comparison, here he is next to Skydive. So you can take a look and see how that looks there. So yeah, old generations, modern generations. Or you know, what is it? Chugger or Chigger or something like that? I forget the acronym for all of the lines of generations. But yeah, now you can take the landing gear, fold it up, and take his gun and just clip it in to the bottom there and it acts as another set of landing gear and you know he's got a gun in the bottom of his helicopter so that's that's pretty cool so to transform him into his next mode which is my favorite of the three modes his armored car mode or his APC mode or something like that whatever to get him into his car mode the first thing you want to do is remove the propeller yeah and you want to take this fold it down and it will clip over one of these little notches just like that and then fold this up peg it in now you have a shiny looking sword and let's put it off to the side. You want to take these sections here and you want to unpeg them from the side. They're on double hinges. They're not really pegged in. They just kind of sit there. You just want to take them and make sure they don't unpeg from there. You just want to bring them to the front of the helicopter like so. Now what you want to do is you want to take these windshield pieces and flip them up. Just like that. Unpeg them from here and bring them out. Just like so. And then you want to take these leg sections here, bend it at this hinge, then bend it at this hinge, like that. Fold up the landing gear, take this front section here, unpeg it, bring it back, and peg it back in, just like that. You just bring that up and get it out of the way for now. You want to bring these sections around, just like so. Now this is the tricky part. This is the part where these bits don't like to peg in super securely. As you can see, that, that happens a lot. So you gotta just orient these properly in order to get them to fit. And it's a bit of a pain, but I'll try and fix that afterwards. You wanna take these, rotate them around, and peg them into there. Just slide those in. Now you wanna take these sections, just fold them up and bring them in. Fold this out, bring that around, and fold that over. Do the same thing on this side, like so. Now, Another tricky part is you got to get that peg into that hole. So you got to flex this a little bit to get it to snap into place. Ugh, come on. There we go. Now it's pegged into place. So you just want to do the same thing on this side here. Just get it all up. That one came undone. That's a little annoying, these pegs here. Just get that in. And then just... Get that one pegged in, just like so. And then you just kind of like try your best to get these to stay into place. Fold that panel back, fold this out just like that and make sure these bits are level. They're not staying pegged in, oh well. There you have Springer's Armored Car Mode and that is the best mode of this figure. This is actually my favorite Voyager Generations anything design. Like, that is just amazing. He's a little crooked. There you go. That is just amazing looking. Just getting close here so you can see some of the details. You got the Wrecker symbol there out of focus. There we go. You got the uh, Chase prototype tires. That's pretty. I really like that. I really do really, really, really like that. You got these uh, stickers here. These are stickers. Sticker, 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 sticker. All those things are stickers, but it still looks cool. You got silver paint here. You got the same yellow. This is yellow paint. These I think are green paint. Uh, silver, very nice silver going down the top there. It's very nice. Underneath, you can't really tell what's robot. I mean, you got the shins here. You can't really tell that's the back of the head though, and it hides the helicopter mode parts very, very well. And for storage of the weapons, you can just fold the knee pads out, and there are these two tabs right there, and these slots in the handle of the sword. So you just take it and you just peg it in just like that. Make sure that panel stays down at the top there. 
Yeah, no, they're not staying. And then you take this section right here, just plug it on top, and there you have the gun on top of the car. Now, normally, gun on top of car is a stupid thing, right? But this makes sense because it's an armored car and it goes up and down and it rotates, so it already has more articulation than most tank transformers. Now, he does roll very well. Very, very well. So, yeah, there you go. It's very dark. He does roll very well. For comparison, here he is with another generation's figure. Here's Skydive. And again, a lot bigger. That's not scale at all, but oh well. So, I guess there's nothing left to do but to get onto robot mode. So, the first thing you want to do is unsaturate his yellow. And then, the next thing you want to do is take these sections back here and rotate them out. And make sure you rotate those around at the same time. So, bring this out, bring this out, and bring that forward. You want to peg it into place like you were going into helicopter mode. Take this panel, fold it up. Take these sections that probably already untab themselves and just bring them down on that same double hinge there. Remove the sword, get that out of the way. You want to bring out the uh, front landing gear. You then want to, this part's a little tricky. You want to, move your camera up. You want to unclip this, bring the head out, and then try and feed it through here. It's a very precise way of doing it, and it does kind of get stuck a lot. But once you have the head out, that's good. There's a port and a tab, and they're going to go into each other, just like they would usually. Then you want to untab the arms from the yellow piece you just brought up. So, yeah, do that. Then you want to, this is another tricky part, you want to unslide these sections here, rotate them all the way up. So, get your fingers in there, unslide, rotate. Take these sections, fold them up, peg them in, fold out the fist, fold up the windshield, just do the same thing on that side, bend the elbows, there you have his arms, mostly done, I forgot a step. You want to then eh, come back here, slide these forward and bend them out, slide this forward, bend it out, now you have his arms, all done. Now you want to take this back panel, untab it, bring it up and tab it into place. Split the legs, bend them in. They're at this little hinge here. You just want to bend them in. Just like that. Take the feet, bring them forward, just like so. Fold out the uh, heel spurs. And bring down these little tail fins till this lines up with the feet. So you just want to do that right there. And there you go. Stand him up. Maybe fold out his knee pads just a little bit. And there you have Generation Springer in his robot mode. And he looks really, really awesome. I have one problem with his design, though, toy-wise. His legs are a little too skinny. They need to be just a tad bit bulkier. But when you look at him from this angle, that just looks great. So yeah, here is Springer in his robot mode. And this is an almost perfect representation of the artwork from the comics just in here. I really wish, though, that he came with an alternate face that had, like, no actual face on it. That would be really cool. If you read the comics, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you should go read Last Stand of the Wreckers. Honestly, it's it's the best. It's got Overlord and Iron Fist and uh, Impactor and this guy and Guzzle and all the Wreckers versus Overlord. It's really cool. Fortress Maximus makes an appearance in it. It's really cool. But yeah, just a quick little 360 of the toy. Again, the stickers are on this guy. So the stickers look very, very nice. Uh, Articulation-wise, well, first getting a quick look at his face there. Very nice Springer face. I could have used a second coat, but oh well. Just looking down the figure here. These stickers help a lot. I find that these ones are the, like, the, the best stickers in the bunch. They help so much with the detail. But yeah, just looking at this guy. Very nicely done. Not too much sculpted detail, but not too little sculpted detail. There's just the right amount on this figure. It's great. But yeah, articulation-wise, head's on a ball joint. You can't really tilt it, but he can look left and right and up and down. You also have a transformation joint that can make him look down even more. Shoulders are on a ball joint. They can go around. They can go out. These can flap if you want them to. He has a bicep swivel. Just under 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel. And if you turn the wrist in the hand that way, you can bend it down so he can have like a sword pointing pose. Which is pretty cool. So yeah, just, just 
get that all out there. He does have a waist joint, which is nice. Hips can go forward, they can go back, they can go out. Thigh swivel, nice clicking ratchet joint at the knee. The flaps can move here, and the feet can't really move. They're static. That's the one point of articulation this figure sorely needs, is an ankle tilt to make it pose just perfectly. Now, for a comparison... Here he is next to Skydive, Generation Skydive. So you can take a look at that. And one thing I forgot to do in my Inferno review, there's a robot mode comparison. I forgot to do that in my Inferno video. But yeah, there's Springer next to Skydive. Now, Springer can hold his weapons and can do a very good job at holding his weapons. So we'll start off with the gun. So you can just take the gun, plunk it in his hand, Bend the elbow. You can bring it out like this. And you can actually get him into a really cool gun holding pose. Well, oh, wrong way. That way. There you go. You can get him into a really cool gun holding pose like he's standing guard. This is hard to do on a lot of Transformers due to their bulk because, you know, robot and car stuff all over him. I'm really glad he can do this. He can also look really cool pointing his gun at some fools ready to blast them in the face. You can just get him into some really nice little action shots there. That makes for a really cool picture, actually. I might take a picture of that later. And he can hold a sword. You can have him with the sword. Or you can have him, like I said, pointing the sword downwards at someone. Which is really cool. I do like that. If you move this out of the way, you can get even more downward motion at the wrist. So that's really nice. So yeah, Generation Springer. He is definitely, definitely worth the pickup. Honestly, get him. Get him and get Sunstorm. And if you really love the mold, get the Rodimus version. The Rodimus version is weird. I mean, okay, actually, I have something to say about this toy. So... The other toy I wanted to compare it to is not here. Oh, well. But Age of Extinction. In Age of Extinction, spoiler alert, Drift is a triple changer. He turns into a helicopter, a car, and a robot. Now, to simulate that in toy form, we got a, a Drift that turns into a car, and then another Drift that turned into a helicopter, but no actual triple changer. What they did was they repainted the Skyhammer helicopter transformer to be Drift's helicopter mode, and they were out of scale with each other and whatnot, and it just looked weird. Why couldn't Hasbro have just repainted this guy, given him a new head, and they have a Drift? I mean, he already comes with a sword. You could have taken the gun away, given him a new head, and maybe some new armor down here, and it would have been car, helicopter, robot. It would have made more sense, in my opinion, to use this mold instead of what they did. But it's over and done with. Oh, well. If you want to repaint this into Drift, go ahead. I think it would make a great Drift. But yeah, that has been my look at the Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 Voyager Class Springer. And I'm that toy guy. And stay tuned for my next video.